Good evening, everyone. This is Sarah from Japan, and welcome back to another Biblical Read-Along. Okay, so today we will be looking at Psalm chapter not, uh, sorry, chapter 8 through 10. Okay, so I'm going to read the commentary before these uh, chapters so that you'll get an idea okay, of what uh, the context is. So, let's look at chap uh, chapter 8. Okay, the sovereignty of the Son of Man. Christ came in humiliation being a little lower than the angels, and suffered death for every man, he was then crowned with glory and honor, and will reign triumphantly. Jesus quoted verse 2 in referring to an incident in his own life, and that's in Matthew 21, uh, verse 16. And we will go a little bit into that uh, when we read that. Uh, Psalm 9, praise to God. The godly praise the Most High for his blessings and glories. There is victory over enemies. God sits as king forever. Amen. This passage, together with Psalm 10, forms an acrostic plan. There are several acrostic psalms. The basic pattern for an acrostic psalm is to use the letters of the Hebrew alphabet in order and start each verse with a consecutive letter of the Hebrew alphabet. In Psalm 9, only 11 of the letters are used of the 22-letter Hebrew alphabet. It seems that this acrostic pattern continues into Psalm 10, but it is not a perfect acrostic. There are some other acrostic psalms which follow the Hebrew alphabet in unique and complete ways. They are Psalms 25, 34, 37, 111, 112, 119, and 145. Okay, Psalm 10, Prayer for Help. The supplication of the godly for di uh, divine intervention is continued in this psalm. There is much wickedness, oppression, robbery, and evil to contend with. And as we read this chapter in particular, you will notice that uh, these characteristics of these people that are evil are very similar to people that are all around us in this day and age. Okay? So now, let's go on to Psalm 8, the second messianic psalm, the sovereignty of the Son of Man. O Lord, our lo or Lord, sorry, <laughs> I want to say sometimes when I'm reading, O Lord, our God, but it's actually, O Lord, or our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? Verse 2. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength. Okay, so what does he mean by that? He has ordained, ordained strength out of the mouth of babes. Okay. All right. Because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. So how does he do that? Let's go over to Matthew 21, verse 16. Okay, in, in Matthew 21, verse 16, it says, it is written, and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have ye never read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. See, Jesus quotes from the Old Testament, from Psalm 8. Okay, so a lot of people um, these days, professing Christians, will say, Oh, we don't need the Old Testament anymore. Uh, the New Testament is enough because we have the New Covenant, blah, blah, blah. But... They, f they fail to see that Jesus himself quoted out of the Old Testament. So if it wasn't important, if it wasn't vital for us, why would he quote from it? Right? Right. Okay. So what does he mean by this? Okay. So, yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings? Babes, children, and sucklings, like infants. Thou hast perfected praise. Thou hast perfected praise. You know, children... Um, they're so innocent in the sense that, you know, um, they don't question um, their faith in their parents or, you know, when they're young. They don't, they just believe and trust. And that's how we're supposed to be. How, what did Jesus say about the kingdom of heaven, how it would be? Let's look at chapter 18 of Matthew, okay? So, uh, chapter 18, Jesus explains greatness. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called the little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them. And he said, Verily I say unto you, and except you be, ye be converted, and become as little children, except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive uh, one such a little child in my name receives me. Okay? So, again, too, what else does he say? 
Jesus blesses little children. Uh, chapter 19, verse 13. Then were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on him and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so we're to have childlike faith. And from this childlike faith comes the, the natural affection towards the Lord, the natural trust towards the Lord, okay? So uh, now, going back to Psalm 8. Verse 3, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man? What is man that thou art mindful of him? Yeah, really, I mean, look around and you look at the amazing creation that the Lord has made. The stars, really, I mean, the moon and, you know, like, um, beautiful snow even. I mean, we just look, look around and all of creation glorifies him. And what are we compared to? all of that we think but you know um really that is what david he's he's in awe of the lord here when's the last time you have been in awe of the lord so again when i consider thy heavens the works of, the work of thy fingers the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visited him for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels I'm talking about jesus here and crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, and the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever pass, passeth through the paths of the sea. O Lord, or lo our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Okay, now Psalm 9. Praise to God, the great deliverer. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sat saddest in, in the throne, judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast, thou hast put out their name for ever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities. The memorial is perished with them, but the Lord shall endure forever. Okay? He hath prepared his throne for judgment, and he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. That's right. And judgment is coming to this earth real soon. We are ripe for it. The Lord also will be a re uh, refuge for the oppressed, a refuge for in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he makes inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. He doesn't forget the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that lifted, liftest up me from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they ha that they made, in the net that they hid in it, is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he ex executeth. The wicked is snared in the works of his own hands. Uh, this is a hard name. Higa Higa, Higa, Ian, Higa, Ian, I think, Sila. All right, the wicked shall turn, shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. You hear that? The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. All the nations that forget God. So the nations, though, what are the nations that forget God? The God. The true God, okay? Those nations, wouldn't they be the ones that knew him before and not nations that never knew him? Like, say, for instance, uh, Japan, I don't think could be considered a nation that forgot God because they never accepted him. Never. You know, so I don't think China could be considered a country that forgot God. So what's a country that forgot God? Okay, who, who is he refer re referring to here? 
The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Wouldn't that be the nations blessed by God, like Israel and like all the European nations that started out, you know, um, well, they didn't start out Christian, but they were Christian, and now they're going back into their pagan practices, like England is a mess, but, and the United States. Okay? So, verse 18, for the, for the needy shall not always be forgotten. The, ex the expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the night, that they, tongue, tongue tight here. I've been doing tongue twisters all day, so, you know, please bear with me. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Selah. Uh, Psalm 10, an appeal to punish the wicked. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the, in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of, boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesses the, blesses the covet, covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. So the wicked blesses the covetous, the people that already have stuff, you know. They bless them, and um, who the Lord abhors. Okay, another word for abhor is hates. Okay, so the Lord hates these people that these wicked people are uh, blessing. Okay, the wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Well, that's true, normally, of those who never came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But what about the professing Christians of today? Uh, a lot of them, when you look at them, really examine their fruit, they're full of pride. And they do not seek after God. They don't open their Bibles. It's amazing to, to me, I don't know, I mean, because I'm in Japan, and I'm in a, you know, a godless nation, really. And I read the Bible every day. And even when I don't have the chance to read the Bible, you know, I can get on the internet and read it off of there, or I can listen to an audio Bible, or I can listen to a sermon from someone who is in truth. You know, um, I crave the word of the Lord. I crave it, and I thirst for it. But there are so many Christians out there who don't even know the basics of the gospel and it's just like you know wow to me that's like a woman okay whose husband is fighting overseas in some foreign land and he sends her love letters and she just gets them and she just puts them aside and never reads them you know I mean obviously if she loved him she'd open them up and read them right so why is it that Christians are so illiterate when it comes to the Bible that's God's love letter to us. So why aren't we opening it? How can we say that we love the Lord when we don't even read His Word? We don't even, the majority of us don't even know who He is because we don't read His Word. We don't study it at all. We have no desire for it. They do not seek after God. And God is not in all His thoughts. And this is sad that this is now not only just about the the people, the unbelievers, but this is about the believer as well. And that's really sad to me. I mean, that must be heartbreaking to the Lord. I mean, just he gave us, he gave his life for us, you know. And that's just that's just really deep betrayal. Anyway, uh, verse five: His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far. Ab above out of his sight as for all his enemies he puffeth it, puffeth at them he hath said in his heart i shall not be moved for i shall never be in adversity nothing ever bad will happen to me that'll happen to somebody else i know a lot of people like that you can tell them man you shouldn't do that you know what whatever you reap and whatever you sow you will reap and they'll say oh no nothing will ever happen to me you know they have this pompous attitude that they're somehow exempt for, from um, the unfortunate atrocities in life, you know. So anyway, his mouth is full of cursing, 
and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Have you heard the average person talk these days? <laughs> he sits in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places does he murder the innocent. <coughs> <coughs> his eyes are privily set against the poor. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. He croucheth and humbleth himself, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. So a false humility here. He has said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see it. A petition for help and the assurance of, of an answer. Verse 12. Arise, O Lord, O God. Lift up thy hand. Forget not the, the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked contemn God? Contemn, okay, so it's C-O-N-T-E-M-N, -N. not contempt, but contemn, okay? And what does that mean? Uh, well, in Hebrews, in Strong Concordance Hebrews, uh, not Hebrews, but Strong Concordance Hebrew, uh, 5006, it's not su. It means to scorn, to abhor, to blaspheme, to despise, to provoke. That's what contemn means. So wherefore doth the wicked blaspheme God, is how you could read it. He has said in his heart, Thou will not require it. For, uh, verse 14, Thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest mischief and spite, to requite it with thine hand. The poor committed himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. Verse 16, the Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his hand. Or not out of his hand, out of his land. Uh, verse 17, Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. To judge the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may no more oppress. Okay, so that concludes my read-along for today. And I thank you for listening along. I'm sorry, I'm a little tongue-tied today. I've been teaching at school, uh, trying to prepare my sixth graders for junior high in April, and we've been doing, like, tongue twisters and so. And also, I haven't been doing read-alongs so much lately, so I'm a little bit out of practice. You know, so I thank you for your patience with me, and I bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm out. Bye.